Hey, pet photographer, have you ever been stuck for a theme for an upcoming photo shoot? So maybe you're doing photos for the shelter. Maybe you want to have like a limited edition or mini session, uh, but you really can't think of a theme to have for dogs and cats. Hmm, are you a little stuck there? Oh my goodness, we, I am going to help you so much today. We're going to take like a little walk down memory rain, lane in my Lightroom catalog here. And I have a list here. <laughs> and I know there's some of these I can't find, but I've come up with 24 themes that I have shot over the years involving dogs and cats. Yeah, so get your notepads ready. This is gonna be fast. We're just gonna look at some examples in my Lightroom catalog, talk through them a little bit, the pluses and minuses, maybe things I'd do a little different now. Most of these are pretty inexpensive. I'm looking at some of them right now and there wasn't much to them. Uh, before we get into the whole catalog though, I do wanna do a couple of caveats. When you are considering theme and props, different backdrops, whole scenes even for pet photography. There's a few things that you need to keep in mind. Obviously, safety. Most of the things uh, I want to have either taped to the wall or very sturdy background and things in the set that if they fell over, they wouldn't hurt anyone or they wouldn't break. So obviously no glass, anything breakable on the set, nothing the cats are gonna knock off a table, um, nothing a dog is going to eat and be sick. <laughs> so you really wanna be thinking about all the safety. You also wanna make sure none, none of the animals get tangled in any of the things that you try. And you'll see as we go through, I'll give you notes. I like to set things around the animals and have minimal things actually on them that aren't designed to be on them. And you'll see what I mean there. So there's a lot of safety things to keep in mind or uh, in the set around the animal and on the animal before you ever start these. There's a lot of a lot of ideas on the internet that people have tried on their personal dogs and they know their personal dogs, but they would not work on a rescue dog or a client dog. So be super careful with the ideas that you come up with that it's all super safe. I'm sure you all know that already. You're awesome pet photographers, right? Come on, you wanna see these cute, cute pictures now? Yes, you are gonna get so many ideas. I'm so excited for you to take a look through these. So let me, let me get this recording. Eee. All right, I have got Lightroom opened up here and you will see, if you know me at all, you know that for years, for five years, I did Spring Me, Spring Me from the Shelter. And last year I changed the name to Garden Paws and then I've kind of dissolved it for this year because I've got another project underway. But these are all of the different, these are just like three or four of the different years that we've done Spring Me. Now you could see the first part, these first ones were all um, fresh, let me go back out. These were fresh flower crowns and collars. I had an agreement with the garden center and with the florist at the garden center that they would make these. It was incredible. So we had to tell her what size the animals were and what coloring. We'd send her little pictures of the adoptable animals. And typically these were dogs that were um, in foster for a while. So, huh? Oh my gosh, so good. And the first year we set up in their meeting room at the garden center and I put up a backdrop. And then after that though, we set up actually within the plants and I got to scour the entire place for pots <laughs> and props. So that's what we had going on. Last year when I changed it to garden paws, it was in the studio. So these were all silk flowers, you know, fake flowers and some little flowers around their neck, which were just baby headbands, human baby headbands. <laughs> so that's what we had going on last year for garden paws. Like, look at this pepperoni. So you can see like the dog has a bandana and then the flowers are just all around and some of these were baskets I already had and then oftentimes the like Michael's craft store will have these amazing sales on their florals so grab those um, oh yes yeah, so we made a little set for the kitties as well they love this we just stuck the blanket into the box and put the flowers all around the box and they just kind of poked in the slats of the box so it was really an easy set really and then the cats could also wear those baby crowns as a collar <laughs> So that, and this, this dog back at the, 
<laughs> they were in these pots and it was just so fun. Yeah, look at that. That's over the years. And here's uh, what I did with some of those with the kind of bluish white background as I made them this old school look, old world look. And then the, we sold these prints, some of these prints at the gala also as a separate part of the fundraiser. Okay, so that's the first one. <laughs> the second one, now keep in mind this, these puppies, this was from 2015. Uh, we, they called these the St. Patrick's Day puppies. And all we did was the table with gray fabric. If you haven't seen the tabletop build of how to make your own tabletop studio, I have two videos on the channel. I'll link to one of them for you. And all we did was obviously put these bandanas on them. Super easy, but these were the St. Patrick's Day puppies. And we did St. Patrick's Day a few years later with just shamrocks taped to the wall. And like, look at this bow tie on the top of this dog's head. That's so funny, right? So St. Patrick's Day or just Irish or green, that could also be a theme. So that's theme number two. And uh, we are in, we're near Fort Collins, Colorado. So CSU is here. So during graduation or back to school, we decided to do these sets. Let me go out to this screen. This was so, so easy. This was, you go to the Dollar Tree and get these little easels and a little bit of chalk and I put some stickers on there. I took a white piece of paper, rolled it up and put paw print ribbon around it. I had my plastic translum on the back of the table, which I stuck all of these graduation stickers to. That's it. Oh, and a tassel. So you can see that very, very, very simple set. And the cats just needed to sit next to it. Super cute. They use these images for years. This says graduation. It could be graduation. It could be back to school. I love how the one cat tipped over. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, like tipped over it. Like, really? You got an A plus? All right. <laughs> but back to school was one theme. Look at that. So cute. Got a little kitty cat diploma there. Um, this little stickers, you could do whatever you want. These tiny little um, chalkboards, really cute chalkboards. And I, I think I might even still have them. Um, so Look at that. And all the little stickers just out of focus in the background, really safe, really easy, really portable, really cute theme. Back to school graduation. Okay. <laughs> Holy cow. The next one is the most expensive setup I have ever done. I do not know what possessed me. This was for a set at the gala. You know, like the photo booth, typically for photo booths, I just have them put black pipe and drape up or some kind of pipe and drape. And then people have little like word bubbles on a stick or mustaches or something. Oh no, I had to be extra this year for bark on the boardwalk. That was the theme. And this whole moon was ginormous plywood moon. I had my friend who is an artist come over and paint this. And in the foreground are clouds. <laughs> so those were two or three feet in front of to get the, all this depth. And there was a black background and we taped up these silver sparkly stars. In the very middle of this, you could see my little dog, uh, Libby. She was posing for, this was like in my house. <laughs> Somehow I managed to get this thing in my house. <laughs> and then it says bark on the boardwalk on the bottom and has the, the old logo for the shelter and my logo. And so you'll see... There's my dog, isn't she silly? There's me. Uh, I also tested it out with a person. I thought, oh, this would be great for kids, you know? Um, and this was actually at the gala. So people would come in here. I had my bench back there that you've probably seen in some of these videos. The bench was there, the clouds, the stars, the moon. It was so fun. But the most expensive set I have ever made. And honestly, I sold that set to somebody having a moon and stars themed wedding. So I was actually able to sell this because it was just too huge to keep. It was really, really huge. Oh, catch a breath. <laughs> then we had, what did we call this one? Oh, just beach. So this was like summer fun. Isn't this cute? Let me go to N actually. This... <laughs> This was so, so cheap. You know what that background is? Is plastic tablecloths. 
that you put on a picnic table. We taped these tablecloths to the wall of this really old, old room at this shelter. <laughs> and then we put a beach towel on the floor. And then we had all these blow up beach toys. So you could see the bucket and the shovel and the beach ball and the tree. And then we put a little lay on the dog. They This might have been for the uh, um, Hawaii Fido, maybe. Uh, so Hawaii Fido, isn't that a funny theme? So we did this a couple of different days and we taped up different ones. This might have been two different years even. Um, we even tried to put some around a kitty cat. See how the cat's not wearing any of these, but it's around the kitty. Uh, so this was a pretty fun set. We had to be really careful that the dog didn't like totally move the, the uh, beach towel around, but you could tell it's beach themed. So super fun. I love that one. It was very easy, very cheap. You're talking tablecloths and blow up things. As long as the dogs didn't want to like chew on the toys, it was fine. It was fine. And doesn't it just transform this little concrete room? I think it did. These are in no particular order, by the way. This is just a catalog that I created in Lightroom as I just scoured through my hard drives. How fun is that, right? So at one point they had uh, one of the people that volunteered owned Tidal Boxing, which I loved boxing. I took their classes for a year or two. Just what a workout. <laughs> and so we said, let's take one of the dogs that's been in foster for a super long time, which happened to be this dog, Nelson. And they, on one of their times where they weren't open having classes, uh, this is a workout class, not like how to punch people out. It was just workout. So they let us bring this dog in and take pictures around the hanging bags and the big gloves and the little gloves like around his neck. And see, isn't that so cute? And the, the weighted balls back here. Uh, he just loved rolling around, <laughs> putting the little gloves around. And so Title Boxing did a little bit of a sponsorship. And one of these pictures we printed and I hung up at Title Boxing. And I don't know if it's still there. I haven't been in for a few years. It's in, the town is too far away for me to go now on a regular basis, but um, I ended up actually having a fundraiser there too. Um, so we did sessions that were boxing themed and we did this outside um, in their little entryway. So that was kind of fun too. I didn't do too many of those, but very, very different. And I think it was because somebody who ran the boxing club wanted to help out. Very cool, right? Um, Christmas, holiday, oh my gosh, this is goes all the way to here. I don't know if these will even all fit on the screen. Wow, look at all these. Okay, over the years, Christmas slash um, holiday season slash winter, um, we've done all kinds of things. This very first set here, super easy. Let me see if I can go back out. This first whole set was, just like jingle bells and empty boxes. So you know that these empty boxes don't cost that much. We've got like $4 here with the white fabric on that tabletop for the kitties. And like this dog managed to keep this little hat on. It had a little bit of elastic here just next to some jingle bells. That's all they wanted. That's all they needed. And we've experimented over time with putting some toys in there or like another, a different cute collar. Uh, like, look at this kitten with the snowman. Ha ha ha! Isn't that adorable? And, you know, they could play around in here. This cat looking at the bell. I think that's super sweet. The kitten's in a box. I don't even know. I don't even know how we did that, honestly. But this was a box that was pre-decorated that we did. That was one Christmas. Um, you can be as simple as just these. Sweaters. Christmas sweaters, and they can make, they make these cool poofy things that can go around their neck, kind of like scrunchies, but bigger. So sometimes it's as simple as just put a Christmas sweater on them. Um, so that's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, but in a pinch, that'll definitely do. This, uh, this, oh, here's a pullback of this set too. Here's a whole nother set for Christmas. Here's, um, these were plastic. So if you're looking at these, these were not the breakable kind, if I remember right, these hopefully, um, or we were really, really careful that the kittens did not push these off the tables. So we had to be careful there. 
Uh, we tried this Dear Santa list, Naughty and Nice, and we'd write the cat's information on there and have a little fake tree, which I still have somewhere. Um, here's a pullback of that set. Here's the table I was talking about. Again, I have plans for that table. You can watch the video uh, here on the channel. So you can see the Dear Santa. Uh, there's a little hat that's hysterical, and this was at the cat side of the rescue. Uh, this was another one where there was wrapped presents and little decorated Christmas tree. Uh, that This time of year, you know, holiday time of year, they usually have sturdier boxes too that maybe you could store things in. This was perfect, going home for the holidays. Oh, wow. And that's when those little red trucks with the tree in the back were getting extremely popular. That was like the first year of major popularity. And then this little box, going home for the holidays, come on. That just says take me home and adopt me, you know? Uh, so we had a ton of fun. Here's, uh, so over here, you saw this hat. Here's a dog wearing that. Come on, right? Ah, and I think this, we set up outside for natural light. So again, it was that table with some puppies on it. So there's another way to decorate for the holidays. And then I wanted to do something. Oh, this was also... This was a long-term adoptable dog, and the downtown had a whole square with all of these fun things. And we said, oh, we've got to take a foster dog there. And so we've got the dog with fun bandanas and scarves around the Christmas trees and the letters to Santa box. And the so we just used the whole setup that they had. <laughs> and nobody, nobody cared. It was just downtown outside. So that was kind of cool. And then... Um, I wanted to do something different that wasn't completely Christmas themed. So we did more of a winter theme and just got some of those really cheap silver snowflakes and just hung them uh, from the backdrop and uh, put a basket with, you know, the plaid, the plaid fabric. And I think they turned out lovely. We use these for a variety of things over the years. This particular thing, this is a wreath. So the kitty is sitting in the middle or behind this wreath. So that's a way too. it was soft. Uh, you wouldn't want to use a pokey wreath for something like this, but I could have edited out the strings and this would have just been snowflakes, right? All right, Whew, we're getting there. Um, and then the last one for Christmas is just these. So again, just be really careful if you're going to wrap a cat or a dog in anything that either gets breakaway or the cat's super calm or something. And this was just a, a placemat <laughs> and, uh, a ribbon, a bow. Next up, we've got what I called bubble pups. This was a fundraiser mini session event that I did, and I had heard that a lot of dogs really love bubbles. So I teamed up with a doggy daycare, and they let us use their facility a day that they were closed. So this was kind of a big deal. <laughs> this was going, going to be this whole thing. This was a few years ago. I just love how one of the clients dressed their dog as a loofah, um, complete with a rubber ducky. Hello! So adorable. So adorable. I don't know about you, but that is the cutest ever. Uh, this dog, he got real low. See all the bubbles? He was catching a ball. Um... <laughs> this, the bubble happened to land right here. I've wanted to do more of these, but what I found was number one, outside, it was really hard to get enough bubbles. I had two people just with bubble machines. And so it was hard to get enough bubbles in the scene, number one. Number two, a lot of dogs didn't like them. So I've even tried like bacon flavored bubbles and stuff. I wanna try it again someday. I think it's a perfect place to do it at doggy daycare. Uh, so Bubble Pups was one of the events that I did. All right. And then we did a capital campaign when this shelter was building on. And before they ever started, we, we took some dogs out there and they wrote stories about each dog telling about what they were going to do with this building. This has been a few years ago now. So we got a safety vest for the dog and we borrowed a hard hat and a tool belt and a variety of things. And we just tried to bring in different uh, alumni dogs. These were dogs that were then uh, adopted. So Lucille was sitting here at the desk telling us all about it. <laughs> this was for like their breaking news segment. Um, 
you know, here's one of the buildings that later turned into the veterinary services building. And so this pops out there with this tool bit ready to build. So this really was amazing for their capital campaign fundraiser. And so simple, like you can get these vests small enough for a dog. And if you have a shelter doing a capital campaign, this is a really, really easy way to do it. And I edited out leashes on all of these. Oh, and they happened to have this bank of lockers. And so they were going to utilize these lockers from the old building. So we did a little bit in there too. So construction theme. Ah, very cool. All right. This one was different. This was for an annual report. And they wanted to do a Wizard of Oz theme. There's no place like home. I think they had a little trouble. They were worried about... Um, copyright in the end so I'm not sure how many they use but this was actually just for their annual report so here we are set up in uh, one of their meet and greet or their back rooms their training room and I think that's the back of the table so you can see I had the toto basket <laughs> and what we tried to do was we had toto and then we had ruby slippers ruby slippers these are in the doll making, doll clothes making section of the craft store. They had tiny, tiny ruby slippers. So the idea was the kitten hat was going to wear those. Uh, this kitty was the lion. So that was the kitty's mane. And then we had a rabbit with the scarecrow. <laughs> and then we had this kitty as the witch. And actually this cat wore the hat. It was an amazing cat. So this was all the animals at the shelter that day. Wasn't Toto cute? Like we found a Toto. <laughs> How fun is that? Yeah. So Wizard of Oz, there's no place like home. See that play on words that I was talking about? Super fun. Here's a cool one. The roller derby team, the local roller derby team. My daughter was actually on this team in high school. They wanted to do a shoot too. And we're like, this, is, this would be great. So the whole, whoever could come from the different teams from all levels, kids to adults, came out in their gear to the shelter and we posed dogs with them. And it was so, so cute. Like, look at this, mother, daughter. So they were wearing the stuff, the dogs weren't. The dogs were just kind of part of the shoot. See how you can see her skates down at the bottom here? And she has her, her gloves on, her wrist guards. And then we had, of course, a couple of refs. Yeah, like a black and white dog with a black and white shirt, you know? Um, and this is adorable. Look at the pepperoni. And they've got their helmets on. Look at this. So cute. Oh, look, and I've forgotten. We'd put a bandana on with the roller derby team on it. <laughs> and here's everybody out front in their gear at the old, old site. So roller derby, I don't remember the name of that uh, campaign, but it was just a short one uh, just to kind of have some fun. All right, roller derby. Oh, fall. Obviously, fall, Halloween, all of that. Here's a very, very simple setup. We use yellow paper from the teacher's area of the craft store. <laughs> you know how teachers decorate their boards? We just use yellow paper and a whole bunch of um, fake leaves and clamped it all onto the tabletop for the kitties. And we had some where we knocked the bucket over and there was a little pumpkin or little tiny kittens we could put in the apple. It's like those apple buckets that, you know, in the fall. There's so many ways. This is just like two props, a, t a fake pumpkin, a little basket and leaves. Okay, three. And look at all the different ways we were able to pose the kitties around them. So that was fun. Um, oh, here's the setup. So here it is at the table. And you can put small dogs on this as well. Uh, but we also did these puppies on that table with real pumpkins and the gray backdrop. So super cute. They wanted to chew on them. But it, this, all this is is bandanas and pumpkins and really focusing on the puppy. So those were a lot of fun. I realize I haven't been zooming into a lot of these pictures. Sorry. I wanted to get through them. Uh, once again, you can do simply sweaters. I don't see why not. Look at this. That's so cute. Looks like a little top of a pumpkin, a little sweater on this dog, a sweater on this dog. Uh, this was a fake pumpkin on this dog. You can go as easy and um, simple as you want. And then these stay in the bins at the shelter so you can use them again later. So one year we did 
little kittens with this little candelabra and some papers. So the shredded papers, I thought kittens would love to play with that, adds that extra splash of color for the holiday. So definitely Halloween themed. We had some just black tulle type material and the cat looks comfy there. Then we put fabric in a basket. What cat doesn't love a basket? <laughs> a little <laughs> witch hat, right? E -e -e. Um, oh, birthday theme. Okay, how far are we? We're about, we're halfway through. Keep with me, okay? Birthday. So what would happen was every year, the cat rescue I worked with, who's now merged with the dog, they would have a happy birthday to us. They'd have a huge party. There would be a no flea market. <laughs> so they'd sell uh, different things like flea market style. And we would always take fun pictures of kittens having a party for the upcoming announcement. So look at this. Oh my God. Kittens in tiny, tiny hats. I don't know where I got these. I would say Party City, because these are really small little hats. Party City, maybe it was like a cake decorating thing too. They're so small. And then the pennant and the little noisemakers, hats knocked over, like they were having a for real party. Um, one of my little baskets, again with the pennant on the little table. There's a lot of helpers involved with this. You can see the direction of light, so I had a light over here. Um, and then I love the outtake ones. I'm just kind of walk on through. It's party time. I'll do what I want. <laughs> um, so just party theme, you cannot go wrong with party theme. These are all nice and safe for the kitties too. We also did the Fort Collins Foxes college baseball team. Their owner is a huge um, sponsor, I guess, a person who support, a supporter of the shelter and invited us out to pose dogs with some of his players. And so we did this. We went out to the ball field one day. The person who maintained the ball field was not too happy with us, but that's okay, it's fine. <laughs> uh, we had a ton of fun. There was all kinds of dogs that came out. Dogs big enough to wear one of the jerseys and we hung some. This is in, obviously in the dugout. They had a ball player came out who was just a huge, huge fan of dogs and just loved every minute of this. So the ball player was really into it, which is awesome. We staged this dog on the home plate. Oh, I edited out the leash in the final pictures, obviously. Uh, here he is with the dog on home plate. And super easy, right? Uh, just a great time at the baseball field. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you can get other organizations involved, it makes really fun promo images for upcoming things. What they would do is uh, once or twice a year at the ball game, all of the proceeds from people entering uh, for admission went to the shelter. So uh, they wanted to give back to the shelter. Moving on. Uh, this is very similar setup to the birthday party. Uh, but this was spring. Uh, again, so this was how we did it for the kittens, was like uh, watering, you know, spring flowers. So I just did all paper. So all paper flowers, a watering can with paper water flowing out of it, and just stacks of the paper flowers everywhere. You could really move it around. There was a lot of copy space for them to write stuff in here. Um, so spring fever, kittens in the spring are a big deal. So they're always looking for ways to get people's attention to support when it's kitten season. Yeah, uh, here's a similar idea for spring. Uh, these two with the flower garland up here, flowers down here by a little, like these are the little drink buckets that you can get in the party section. You put ice and, and water in here, but we put kittens in there, no, no ice. <laughs> Next up patriotic. So they we did two separate ones. One year at 4th of July in the United States, 4th of July is Independence Day, we did patriotic pups. So we had, oh goodness, we had these um, necklaces, uh, uh, that bucket again, right? And a little tie that we just put down there. The back of the backdrop paper, I had stars all over, red, white, and blue stars. We'd put things on the bucket, on the puppy. There was a lot of helpers here. But he managed to get that hat on the puppy for a moment. We put some United States flags around, super fun. And then we can take the same set over to the kitties. And then one year we did it during election. So in November is our election, our big elections. And we did this and they said, vote for this puppy, vote for that puppy. It was really, really cute. So they had a little competition. 
So patriotic pups, that's always great. Consider that no matter where you are in the world. And of course we did Harry Potter at one point. <laughs> oh boy, one of the directors there or managers was really, really, really into Harry Potter and happened to just have all these things like the scarves and the goblet um, and the sorting hat. It was so fun. They were so stoked about this. They made these into the kennel cards. It was a whole thing. But you can see how simple is this? You just have the house uh, scarves on each each dog. And so where are they gonna be sorted, you know? Here's the goblet, <laughs> goblet of fire, you know? And the dog looking into it, what's in there? <laughs> we probably put a treat in there. Really, really simple, really simple. This dog obviously was more of a blanket, but that's okay. You could see we showed the emblem of the house. Here's the sorting hat. <laughs> super, super fun. There's the wand. We also had a wand, of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, this one was France. So the gala had a French theme to it. Oh boy, I wish I could remember what the name of the theme was. But we tried a beret on these dogs and then they had just these this basket of toys. Uh, there's a baguette and a croissant and some olive oil. <laughs> and so it was very, very simple. We didn't have a lot of dogs to choose from that day. Uh, so that's what we went with. So there's our French theme, just basically berets and bread. <laughs> oh, then we have love and Valentine's. I've done a couple of different things for this. So this was really, really simple. It was a banner that spelled out love and have hearts. So I just taped hearts on the wall, honestly. And then we put pink and red bow ties and collars on the animals. Very simple. I did this as a fundraiser as well. So these were just for the shelter, but I also did some that people could pay for sessions. Exact same setup. Really, really cute. He, 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 he. I really love these. Those turned out good. They're very simple, but very striking. Our eye is always drawn to red. For cats, uh, you can see an entire video I made of me building this kissing booth. So again, we have the love banner, we have some tissue paper. I just cleaned out whatever craft supplies I had, honestly, and made a box and put a blanket in it and the kitties loved it. <laughs> um, so there you go. We were gonna do a play on words hissing booth, but we thought, no, we want these kitties to be in a good light. <laughs> So that's that was what we did. Uh, so little kissing booth. You could do this on a large scale for dogs too. I just haven't gotten that far. Um, these are winter, winter warmth. If you've seen a couple of videos I've done on this, uh, they wanted to showcase um, winter warmth was the name of this uh, campaign. Uh, what I did was I just got this fleece fabric and cut it myself into all different size scarves. So little ones, big ones, and you can see videos here on the channel of doing these photos and compositing these two together. These were completely separate, taken at separate times and different locations, but here I just put the um, the scarf around the bed for the kitten. So there's the kitten and the puppy and we just put them together for their campaign. So scarves are really easy, really comfy for the most part. And um, so winter warmth was a cool, a cool theme. Cool, a warm theme, whatever. Um, okay, we're in the home stretch, everybody. Okay, then we did, oh gosh, was this a year and a half ago? I have a video here on the channel for this too. Um, 1980s theme. <laughs> I think it was 80s prom, 80s prom. I really, really wanted to these leg warmers to work out. <laughs> oh my gosh. But the little dogs were so little and these were baby, oh gosh, I found these on Amazon, baby leg warmers for like infants, <laughs> human infants. And they've just kept falling off these dogs and they were puppies. So they thought it was a grand time to just play with them. But you could see how they tried to keep the leg warmers on very like 80s and I wanted the bright pastel pastel well bright colors of the 80s uh then we had the bright jewelry uh necklaces this was at my studio uh then we changed out did a yellow backdrop uh, I don't know if you remember we used to wear all these bracelets these colorful bracelets uh in the 80s so I just got a bunch of a, a bunch of bracelets they, these dogs were so small they could wear them but for the most part we just scattered them around 
and we did those bright primary colors. That was our 1980s theme. So you could go simple and still be on theme. Because you can imagine if you just wrote 1980s prom in a font from that era, you're good. You're golden, right? Yeah. Okay. We're almost there. Woohoo. This has been so fun. Uh, this one was recent. This was just this last year. This was the col Colorful Colorado. That is every sign you see coming into Colorado says welcome to Colorful Colorado and our Purple Mountains Majesty, that kind of thing. So you could see a whole video of me building these mountains uh, this last winter. And I have a set that's big enough for dogs, like little dogs, big dogs, and we even got down to the kitty size. And so I just squished the mountains and only used half of them for the kitty cats and the nice warm fleece and stick on uh, snowflakes, right? Awesome. So colorful Colorado with the winter. And I don't think you have seen any of these. This is a very recent campaign, Raining Cats and Dogs. So this was to talk about spay day and the importance of spaying and neutering your pets. So we're, we stop having these um, deluges of kittens and puppy seasons. So very simple. They found some raincoats for dogs and brought in a colorful umbrella, my trademark blue background, and uh, they made some puppy clouds that we just taped to the background. Simple as that. A raincoat, blue sky, puffy clouds, raining cats and dogs. Come on. Um, and then the last one here is also very recent. You haven't seen this. <laughs> Even simpler. This was Marty Paws. This is an upcoming, this is this spring's fundraiser, Marty Paws. And the director just found this backdrop that looks like there's a Bourbon Street in um, Louisiana. And what's that city? New Orleans, New Orleans. And so oh, I don't have a picture of it, but we tried to, like we put the mask on the dog and the beads, but we also just had it sitting on the, um, the background. So that was Marty Paws. And uh, that's what they're gonna use for the upcoming gala. And they're actually getting a bigger version of that backdrop to pose the people on at the gala. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this walk down memory lane. You got a bunch of ideas for themes for your next pet-based event, whether it's for the shelters, mini sessions, fundraisers, campaigns, whatever you wanna do. Oh my gosh, once you start kind of thinking about these, you won't go into a store with the same again. I can't go into Dollar Tree, Party City, furniture stores, anywhere without thinking of how can I use this for dogs and cats. So you're welcome. Uh, so recently I did ask for your submissions for a photo to be shown at the end of the video. And this image is from Leah. She has Instagram page banjo underscore the underscore chai, uh, chi, like chihuahua. So I'll put that's on screen here too. Banjo the chi. Uh, then she is from, I want to say Ireland. Let's see. Ireland. Uh, Leah is from Ireland. And she said she started off with landscape photography, moved on to animal photography um, because she basically lives in a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> so many pets around end up taking mainly pictures of her own dog. He loves to pose because he loves the treats. Win, 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 right? Very cool. And it is cold at the time that she sent this to me in Ireland. So they moved inside to make this studio. So there you go, Leah. And I will put a link to her Instagram. I hope you go follow her and up and coming pet photographer, Leah. Thank you so much for submitting your photo. So make sure that you check out Leah's photo and check out this video next. I know you're gonna like it. And as always, I wish you many woofs, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S's.